Hello and welcome to the Oxygen Addict Triathlon Podcast. We're brought to you every week by our sponsors. We are tribe.co. Natural sports nutrition delivered direct to you. You can get a free trial pack of six delicious energy bars, trail mix, recovery bars and shakes for just one pound by using the code OXYGEN1 at the checkout. Absolutely. And also Team Oxygen Addict at team.oxygenaddict.com. Event specific training plans, coaching guidance from a croaky sounding coach, Rob Wilby, and supportive <laughs> teammates in a private Facebook group. Hello, he said in a croaky voice. <laughs> and welcome to the show. And as you can probably tell, I've got a bit of a croaky voice going on, but we shall we shall power on through, won't we, Hells? It's, we will. It's a small problem compared to trying to do a race out in the heat of Kona, which has obviously been what's been going on this weekend. Oh, did you watch it, Rob? Were you, were you following? Hells. As as you'll probably have seen from Twitter, I was there from the, I didn't see the start of the swim. I had some stuff going on. I was working this weekend doing a coach education course. So I got in to see, did I see the men get out? I definitely saw the women get out and had my tea on my knee. And I just sat down and watched it all the way through to about the 10 mile point of the men's run. Um, and then I had to go to bed because I was exhausted. I had to get up early the next day to go and work again. But yes, I was there tweeting away my inane tweets uh yeah it was good how about you how much of it did you see so i didn't see the swim uh because a bit like you i was doing other stuff so i probably watched it from about i don't know half six uk time maybe seven ish uk time um and then at around about 11 o'clock uk time i was thinking oh i should really go to bed now but no i carried on watching it for a bit it's just, it was quite gripping it was yeah, it's quite good. addictive and then i went to bed and i was still then then i put it on my phone so i was watching it on my phone by about half 12 i think i thought i really should get some sleep now so i left my phone on um so i could still hear it because i used to do that quite a lot with like audio so it's not strange for me to okay sort of sleep with sound and it's very strange i can drop off and then i'll wake up again and hear a bit more so then i sort of was in and out <laughs> in and out of um i don't know sleep and watching and oh i was it was just gripping rob and i was like did yeah but if you, any, if you turn any it bits off... up as you went along did you keep waking up and hearing bits oh yeah yeah oh, that's yeah, interesting yeah, yeah. So then I would clearly look at it again and go, oh, my God. Oh, oh, he's made the pass or yeah. whatever. So I did see the pass happening. Um, oh, did at you mile. really? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I saw the Brilliant. pass happening. Um, and so I definitely saw the end of the men's race. Then I think I might have nodded off again a little bit. But honestly, I kept on picking it up, looking at a little bit, putting it down. <laughs> so I think I had a whole load of sleep. But I was... I was really quite gripped by it all and and I was really loving watching Lucy Charles out on the bike. She was a seeing... machine. Well I'll tell you what we should do, right? Why don't we why don't we go through the results and then we'll talk about the race because otherwise if people don't know what's happened yet <laughs> If we people might don't know a, what's happened, then they might have been hiding might, un, under a rock or in a cave. We might give away the ending before the... Okay. So, spoiler alert. Our results this week are brought to us by Tribe over at wearetribe.co. Now, this week, we want to push the idea of the Blaze Trials Energy Bar. Um, these are their delicious, delicious snacky 25 grams of nutrient-rich carbohydrates, vegan, gluten-free, and dairy-free. Hells, what was your favorite flavor? Can you remember when you had them? Yes, absolutely. The orange and cacao one. I I was a big fan of the, do you know what? You're going to think this is disgusting, but beetroot and cacao doesn't sound, oh, were like, you? It should, doesn't sound like it should be a good, uh, a good combo, but the beetroot is just yummy. No, chocolate and beetroot cake is always a winning thing. So if you've got beetroot and cacao in a bar, then uh, yeah, it's uh, you can't go wrong with that. Orange and cacao, Rob, I remember having that bar in the, peeing rain on the Isle of Man um, in March and it <laughs> kind of allowed me to carry on for <laughs> for another probably hour and a half when I really wanted to cry. I think I got hypothermia. So yeah, that, that was a saviour um, and I can <laughs> highly recommend them. And we did take a few of them um, on the ride in Italy as well. Maybe, and again, you know, they the, could use that in their advertising prevents it, it, hypothermia it, in Helen well, I tell you, it did it didn't prevent it it just <laughs> made it not 
<laughs> maybe it gave me a, about another half an hour perhaps love um, it yeah yeah it did the trick um and you know what rob the cacao and almond one was the first bar that they ever made there you go so listen, you guys can pick up a trial pack. If you haven't tried it yet, get on over to wearetribe.co. Use the code OXYGEN1 at checkout and you can get six samples of either energy bars, trail mix or recovery bars or shakes for just one pound. Use the code OXYGEN1 at checkout. Um, so let's go with the latest results first then, shall we? And then we can do our big chat about what happened. Okay, fine. So... Um... Daniela Reef took the win, as I think many people predicted. Uh, so that's her third straight uh, Kona victory. Really impressive stuff in eight hours, 50 minutes and 47 seconds. Lucy Charles of Great Britain was second, dipping under nine hours in 8.59.38. And then Sarah Crowley of Australia was third in 9.01. We should also mention, Rob, uh, we... We had sort of tipped Kaiser Sally, hadn't we? She was fifth. Susie Cheatham yeah. sixth. Yeah. That was one I did predict as well. Yes, Susie did sixth. Well. I did say that. Um, Carrie Lester was seventh. Liz Lyles eighth. Annabelle Luxford ninth. And Jocelyn McCauley tenth. Uh, Sid came in in fifteenth. Corin Abraham sixteenth. And Joycey was twentieth. Rachel Joyce. Nikki Bartlett. We will hear from her shortly. Unfortunately, she was a DNF. And Leander Cave, who had come down with really horrible food poisoning earlier on in the week, she also didn't finish. So yeah, listen out in a little bit because we will hear uh, from Nikki, who we caught up with um, the morning after. Yeah, I think Leanne the K was hospitalised, wasn't she, in the run mm. to the race? So it wasn't just like an inverted, just just food poisoning. It was it was hideous for her. Um, and Nikki Bartlett's interview is brilliant. I had a good lesson to that this morning, and I've got to say, if you're under if you're under any illusions about how much fun it would be to race in the sun of Hawaii, Nikki's interview will will take the scales off your eyes for sure. Um, but more about that later on, right? Yeah, um, definitely. Over in the men's race, we had a win for German powerhouse Patrick Langer in a new course record of 8.0140. Our, our good friend Lionel Sanders finally has the fantastic race we knew he was capable of in, in uh, Kona. to come in second in 8.0407, so also under the old course record. And David McNamee of Great Britain from Scotland in 8.07.11 fills, uh, fills out the podium after a terrific run from him. And we had Seb Keenlay in fourth, James Kanama in fifth, Terenzo Bazzoni in sixth, Andy Potts in seventh, Patrick Nielsen in eighth, Ben Hoffman in ninth, and Boris Stein in tenth. And Harry Wiltshire finished down in 21st place. So let's talk about the ladies' results first, mate. That was... I was I, I tuned in like I said ten minutes before the end of the women's swim, and there were two women swimming. Then I was thinking, who's who's that swim with Lucy Charles? And they were clear they were just going for it, and you could see they were catching the men. They were going right through packs and packs and packs of men, and I think mm. they caught the men's second pro pack in the final couple of hundred meters. So they swam through virtually all of the men uh, to get out, and the the commentators called it wrongly they thought um oh, lauren was with her. lauren brandon lauren brandon was with they thought she'd got the inside line and had gone for it and lucy charles just turned on the afterburners and put it doesn't sound like much saying put five seconds into her but it really looked like a sprint finish you know went zooming oh. through this pack of men with 50 meters to go and uh and, and took out the pro swim and he thought oh brilliant well you know she's taking the swim prime off she goes onto the bike and I was in two minds at this point. Obviously, everybody knows that she's really improved her biking, but I don't think anybody quite expected how strong she was actually going to be because off she went and I was looking at the time updates and thinking, well, here comes Daniela Reef. But she was actually she didn't. Putting, she was putting time into Daniela Reef's group all the way through for the first 140 k The gap grew and, and then sat around five minutes, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was really, really awesome riding. And Lauren Brandon was there with her for, what, 120K? But yeah. just sat on, when I say sat on her wheel, um, she was obviously doing it legally, but didn't go to the front at all. So she was just, you yeah, know, I wasn't sure about to... that. That's what I thought. Every update I saw, 
she looked like she was sitting, you know, a good 20 meters back. Mm -hmm. But then I saw an interview with Lucy this morning and she said that they, they worked well together was the phrase that she used. So I don't know whether she's been magnanimous or whether. Well, I, I thought, <laughs> yeah, cause I it in think I probably saw the same one. And I thought, I think she's just being very polite. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly didn't see Lauren Brandon at the front, but that doesn't mean that she wasn't. Correct. Correct. <laughs> no, it was really, really awesome stuff. And then um, I, I, I saw a you know, probably that same interview with Lucy and, and she was saying that essentially going in there, you know, it's her first time as a pro in, in Kona. She was like, I have nothing to lose. So she said I was biking hard and I didn't know if I was biking too hard and whether I'd be able to, you know, run off of that. And yeah. interesting, Daniela Reef in, in her post-race interview essentially said she did a 40, it would have been 40 miles, wouldn't it? Um, time trial at the end of that bike leg 40k time trial yeah 40k it was, time trial that last 40k she was still five minutes down yeah and yeah, yeah it was just I, I don't know if you saw that bit but the, but the speed she went by lucy at the yeah, end was that. just yeah. unbelievable wasn't it yeah yeah, yeah. But, it was a bit, so she she had said then yeah it, 40k time trial because and then she said you know i, I wasn't sure if i had gone too hard there and what effect that would have had on the run, but seemingly it didn't have too much of an effect on her because she went yeah. on to, you know, look really, really comfortable and, and run a bang out a solid three hour marathon. So, yeah, it was just really, really cool to see Lucy Charles at the front of that race. And Rob, Red Bull, seriously, they must have been loving that. They clearly knew she's going to come out of the water first and she's a bit of a nifty cyclist. We need her, you know, she's a damn fine athlete. Yeah. We're going to sign her up. Yeah. Um, then essentially Red Bull had um, the whole, <laughs> the whole coverage. They had a Red Bull athlete at the front of the race for the whole thing because Daniel Rafe is also a Red Bull athlete. So they've done all right, haven't they? Yeah, they sure have. Good bit of advertising there for them. I'm just looking at the stats here, being a stats geek. And um, Daniela Reef lifted her pace over that last 20, the last 20K of the bike. She picked her pace up by like three miles an hour. Isn't that unbelievable? <laughs> that is, especially, you know, at the end of, at the end of, at the end of an Ironman. Yeah. And knowing that you've got a marathon to go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, is, that is awesome. It shows the just what an impressive athlete she is doesn't it and also it shows how incredible a race lucy had to make her work so hard she looked so composed the whole time oh, didn't she totally. she just looked like she was she was riding tempo she was riding with it. i mean she rode fast it was like a 458 i think so it was an amazingly fast bike leg but she looked totally in control and, and as soon as she got on the run she was running with really good form and so mm. good to see because she struggled all last year with injury didn't she mm. um so yeah absolutely made up for her and i think back to I think back to Ironman UK. Exactly. How many years ago was that now? <laughs> so was that was 2015. Yeah. yeah, 2015, Ironman UK, Lucy sure, Charles. We both stood there with a the microphone going, who's that young lady who's just bounced across the line looking all happy? She and literally... Smart? Do you remember there was all those like really fast male age groupers lying on the floor, destroyed with spit all over their faces? <laughs> and Lucy's like, just yeah, there. Yeah, hi. It's like, go and get an interview with whoever that is. <laughs> yeah, went and grabbed a, an interview with her and... Um, yeah, she's done superbly since then. Future yeah, world I, I, um, you think? Totally, totally. I remember her coming past me on the bike at, um, at Zellamze and I just thought, wow, she is flying. And she had probably started about, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if it was an hour after me, hopefully half an hour. But it could, <laughs> I, seriously, that was my dreadful bike mare day. But um, In your I defense, mean, still, your brakes were on. Yeah, exactly. But, but I just thought, gee whiz she's flying and yeah, again yeah. that was 2015 so she's yeah she has had an incredible year this year and absolutely future world champion without a doubt because if you think how much she has come on um in the past you know 12 months mm. and even um, since her, her was she second at ironman germany did i get that right i think so she won she won lanzarote and then yeah second behind sarah crowley and she did 313 or 314 in the marathon there so she's gone five minutes faster than her ironman marathon pb 
in Kona in the heat. So, <sighs> hats off, mate. It's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Really, really cool. So, it is. more to yeah. come. Yeah, Hope we definitely. can get her back on now. She's a big star. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to find out, won't we? All right. Yeah. So um, I've got to. I didn't see much of the the ladies' race happening in the background, as, as is the way with the, the the footage that happened. But it looks like Sarah Crowley and Heather Jackson had a right ding dong for third and fourth, didn't they, on the run? Yeah, all the way. Uh, like I mean, all the way throughout the bike and then onto the run as well. And then yeah, Kaiser Sally was moving quickly through the field on on her run. Susie Cheatham had a really solid race and she said afterwards you know i'm just so so happy to be back in the mix um yeah at kona um laura siddle i guess probably disappointed with her result you had her a second i had a in my top 10 um and then rachel joyce again i think her result yep i'm sure she'll be absolutely disappointed by it but you know when you take a step back it was going to be her was it her third Ironman in three months or fourth in four months? It was something yeah. mad like that. And yeah. and you think her little boy Archie is, what, 13 months old. So to have achieved what she has achieved this year, from that, I just, as you said last week, from that interview that we did with her, you know, in February, and she yeah. was basically She's saying, yeah. She's doing 145s. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's phenomenal, yeah. isn't it? It's absolutely um, fantastic. So, yeah, although it wasn't the result on the day, I think take a step back and she'll yeah. be proud of, of what she's achieved. Yeah, absolutely. Right, men's race then. Oh, it was so good to watch as well. Scorch Rooney. Um, it's great. What was, your, what was your take on watching Cam Worth go off the front on the bike? Well, I just, I was thinking, oh my God, he, he did Ironman Wales and, and won Ironman Wales only five weeks ago. That was yeah. what was going through my head, Rob, thinking, this guy, this is awesome. Um, and it was really good to see him up there and, you know, even people like Beck Keat were t- tweeting things like, an Aussie I've never really heard of is leading, you know, the Ironman World Championships. And it was cool because having him there, you know, made everyone else put the still put the hammer down. Yeah. Because if you don't react in Kona, there's, you know, the, the, yes, people say I'm going to do my own race and things like that. But when you listen to a lot of their interviews, they also say if you don't react, you're completely spat out. Yeah. And, and I think he really shapes the race because as he went, he took he took Sebi and um, Lionel Sanders with him and listening to Lionel Sanders talk after the race, he said he might not have done that had someone else not gone off the front. Cause he'd from what I I heard, he got kind of dropped on the descent from Harvey in the crosswinds and mm. had to make a decision to go, go mental on the bike. He said he did like half Ironman Watts for 15 minutes to try and get back up to the, to bridge back up to the Sebi group. And as he got there, off goes Cam Worth and he followed. And uh, had that not happened, he might have settled in and it might have, you know, it might not have quite played out the same way. Because, mm. you know, he was absolutely destroyed, wasn't he, at the 23 mile point of the run. You watch that bit where... Sanders. Yeah. Oh, God. I <laughs> just he got past, he just looked in... I mean, everyone relates to it. Absolute agony, the look on his face. It, he he looked like he was in agony from the beginning, and and I think that's, you know, that's the point. And you sent me a message saying I think he's injured. Yeah. And it's like, no, he just runs like that. But honestly, there was one point I thought, oh, he really is hobbling there, and he wasn't. <laughs> you know, his run form had gone completely. Mm. I mean, really, really completely. But he was still moving pretty swiftly. I, I think he just genuinely he was he ran a marathon. And he was knackered from having ridden. Yep. He was like four minutes inside the old bike course record. I mean, you shouldn't discount the fact he was four yeah. minutes inside the old bike course record. So was Seb Keenley. It's just that Cam Worth was, was a little bit faster than they were. To then go out and run a marathon like he did. I've watched videos of him running and he's, yeah, he, he says himself he's not the most beautifully formed runner. But usually he looks 
much more comfortable than he did running off the bike that day. He looked like he was exhausted from the minute he set off. And to turn yeah. out a 251 marathon feeling like that, I just think there's so much grit inside him. Yep. Yep. And then honestly, I just recommend go back and watch, go back and watch Bob Babbitt's interview with him um, that he did, you know, the day after the race. And <laughs> I, I loved watching that because even already he he was saying, you know, I, I know there's so much I can improve on and, you know, I didn't do this right or I didn't do that right. And he was saying I, he felt he could, he, he knew he was absolutely shattered. And he said, I, I knew I was not running well. Um, so yeah, watch it and be mm. inspired by him because I, I do think he's one of these really compelling people. And yeah, we know he has an amazing backstory as well, but he's just such a great talker and you could, I could listen to him all day long, yeah. Bob. And, and genuinely nice guy as well. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Really, really nice yeah. guy. Yeah. And uh, whoever won his vest in our, in our charity draw, get that in a frame on the wall. That's going to be worth a fortune. <laughs> Psychically, so, yeah, I, nothing else. I think Sanders, again, future world champion at some point. Um, yeah. But Patrick Langer, what a... What an incredible run he had, Rob. Um, he did he did a 2.39.59 marathon, so pretty much same as last year. But he he was forced to do that. Mm. You know, Lionel Sanders forced him to run yeah. that quickly, pretty much. So if and he, he wanted to win. he was very gracious as well in saying oh. the other person who made him run that was David McNamee. Yep. And the yep. fact that he was... I think 10 seconds behind him on the road and he kept looking over his shoulder and seeing David McNamee still there and they apparently raced each other a lot on the ITU circuit and the, the French circuit when they were growing up so he said I know he's a really good runner I knew he was right behind me and David McNamee sort of said I knew that Patrick was going to pace it really well and not to go nuts so I just hung out behind him for the first 15 miles so it played out to be I mean I don't want to say we called it hells because we I was saying there's going to be didn't. an iron war <laughs> Yeah, you said all three. <laughs> Do you know, wouldn't it have been awesome if um, Jan Fredino hadn't been injured not, this year? I know. If yeah, he'd yeah. been in the run form he was in last year, he'd have been an extra element in that run for sure, wouldn't he? Yep, he would have been. Um, but yeah, sadly, Fredino, fair play to the man, Rob. He finished. He finished in 9.15. Yeah. yeah. Um, Imagine about, that 9.15 I mean, after doing a greater than four-hour marathon. That's nuts, isn't it? It's crazy. I know. It's really, really crazy. Um, yeah, but it was a brilliant, brilliant men's race. And, and David McNamee, Rob, first Briton, uh, first male, or uh, British male, to get on the podium at Kona with his, with his third place. Um, he did a 2.45 marathon. And again, I, I think last year he didn't have the race he wanted in Kona, did he? The year before he was... Um, was that his debut the year before? And he and he the, had this solid result, didn't he? And, and, the and everyone was like, run, wasn't it that year? Yeah, remember? Yeah. And everyone sort of said, and that's the key, I think. If you can run well in the heat, and I think he's as baffled as anybody as to his natural ability to run in the heat, because you can't imagine you get a lot of hot, humid days where he lives. Well, he's based in Girona in Spain. Um, ah, but again, I didn't know that. Been, okay, but but I mean, it's not Kona, is it? <laughs> well, yeah, very true. It's not Kona, but but yeah, he he is based in in Spain um, and trains out there, um, and I think Jan Fredino is also based out there, so I think they train together a little bit. Um, oh, but knowledge. yeah, I mean, honestly, third place, David McNamee, absolutely superb race from him, um, and he said he couldn't quite believe it when he came past Sebi Keenly to to get that podium spot. Um, so yeah, awesome stuff and. Um, so should we do the top 10 of the men, Rob, because we did for the women? Or did you do them? Yeah, did them already. Yeah, I remember you mentioning Harry Wiltshire, didn't you? So I did. yeah, went through it. What I was going to say, Rob, with my, you know, kind of fish-like memory there of three seconds, <laughs> right? I didn't predict the top 10 correctly. However... Go on, how did, did you do? Think... How did it stack up with your predictions? So my prediction was first for Dino, um, second Sanders, yeah. third Keenley. Okay. So, you know, one of them was correct. Then I said fourth Don, who unfortunately had that awful um, crash, so didn't yeah. start. I said fifth was going to be Langer. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then I said sixth was going to be James Kanama. 
Very good. So, you know, nearly. Uh, then I said Brent McMahon, who I think got a drafting penalty. Then I said McNamee. Okay. Uh, then I said Tim O'Donnell. And then I said Hoffman. So I didn't do too badly. That was pretty good. Not too bad, What did I go it? for in the end? Did I go for Fredino? Langer, Keenly. Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so good. Exciting we times. Didn't, yeah, neither of us got it um, bang on, but, um, you know, we had a few names there. Yeah. Good? Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Love watching it. It's a, it's a great and inspirational race. What did it make? Did it make you think, um, yeah, I'd I'd like to do that one day, or did it make you think? <sighs> um. <laughs> No, it didn't actually. I wasn't sitting there thinking I want to go and do it one day. I, I was just genuinely enjoying, and this is going to sound pretty sad. My idea of a good time is sitting and watching the World Championships. Yeah, that sounds really sad. It, well, I know, but that's just that's just how it is. I, I like sitting there. I like watching the athletes ride the bikes through the beautiful scenery. I had my dinner on my knee. Had it on. And fair play to the, the Red Bull TV thing. The my new telly's got a Red Bull app, and I had it on the, the big telly without needing to. Do you remember those years ago trying to get the computer connected up to the TV oh, and all God. that? Oh God, yeah, yeah. So, so it just played on the telly, and it was it was great. I thought the coverage was really good, and uh, it was just like watching a well produced TV show. Um, and Charlie Webster, I thought, was brilliant. You know, the young British presenter. Yeah thought she was yep. ace i read her backstory on wikipedia and was very impressed with her so nice one charlie there we go so rob shall we hear from nikki bartlett now yes let's get your nikki interview up here he goes i'm trying to follow you nikki on the tracker and and then it just i don't know it was like it, there was a third run split i think and then and then there was nothing and i was like oh no what what's happened so what happened well, at that moment, uh, I was lucky enough to find Bex, and um, then we were lucky that a car came past. Um, and at that point, my legs would have been hanging out the car whilst I tried to get my body in, and I just literally collapsed in. Well, I just collapsed in a heap. I just i I got on the bike after after like an absolutely amazing swim, like absolutely chuffed to bits with my swim. Kind of this kind of swim I put together, which I'd hope to in a couple of years' time. Um, so yeah, Stokes the swim came out buzzing, got on the bike, and I just had, it was just bizarre. I had nothing like I had obviously a range of what's to keep between because obviously the conditions, but I was literally couldn't even ride like easy watts. So I kind of knew straight away, oh my god, I'm in for a long day. But I hoped I would come out of it, mm-hmm. but I just didn't. It got progressively worse. And I was just progressively digging the biggest hole. I was like riding easy pace watts, but almost like felt like a 70.3 race effort <laughs> the whole way around. Um, so yeah, like I didn't even know if I'd finished the bike to be honest. Um, and then when I got onto the run, I thought, just see how long you can go for and just, yeah, see if it gets to you to the finish line. Even if I was going to run a like four hour marathon, I just wanted to finish. But I just couldn't, like, literally my body just wouldn't let me. A complete collapse. <laughs> so did you collapse when you saw um, Bex? It was weird because like, I was like, almost kind of holding it off. Like, I was kind of by the turnaround point on Alley Drive. I was not in good place. Like, I kept walking. You know when you put your hands on your head and you, your vision won't let you walk straight? Um, and I was kind of, like, swerving out into the road where car access like media car access was allowed and I could remember volunteers saying no no stay on this side and I literally couldn't stay on the side I was like I'm trying I'm trying and so I just kept and because the aid stations were every mile I just kept thinking get to the next aid station take on loads of stuff you might pull out of it and I just I just couldn't pull myself out of it um and it's it's really weird like on reflection I don't really know what, what happened because I kind of like did a whole preloading with um salts had enough fluid and salts and all my nutrition on the course so I, just, I really just didn't know what happened um it was weird because it was like an absolute scorched day but when i collapsed i just kept getting really cold I just felt cold um so yeah i don't really know <laughs> so 
And yeah, I'm just gonna have to come back strong next time. <laughs> I, I think you will. I, I guess that is. I don't know. I imagine this morning. So we are speaking, and it's about half six in the morning for you out in Kona. So, uh, yeah. like the morning after the the race, and I guess you probably haven't even had time to process it all because you were probably out of it most of last night. Um, so you, I guess, uh, a whole range of emotions going through your brain and questions and thinking oh what what if what if yeah totally and I don't know it's bizarre like yeah you're right I haven't really had time to process much um but yeah like I don't even know what we'll pinpoint it on because sometimes it's like oh well I did this stupidly I went off too hard but I literally couldn't go off too hard on the bike because I couldn't even put because I tried, because I came out with a group in the swim, and I took my time a bit in transition. And I thought, oh, I'll just almost put a steady conservative effort in to catch the group. And I was like, oh my god, I can't even put my race spots down, um, let alone really get towards the group. And I thought, oh god, what was this about? Um, so I kind of just like spun it off for a bit, and then I even lapped my Garmin. I was like, right, fresh start, lap my Garmin. <laughs> and, then, and then that didn't work; it got worse. And then I was like okay right I've got to turn around point I love that my Garmin fresh start again and then I was like I couldn't even believe the bots I've seen like I don't even think I'd ride those bots for an easy ride either like they were lower than my easy riding and so I just turned it off I, thought, I can't stare at that just kind of go see what you can do um just made sure I got fluid at every aid station I made sure I was cooling the right places down the body but to be honest I didn't even feel overly hot on the bike if I'm honest like there's a there, there's a headwind the whole time so I found that was quite cooling and kind of the fusion speed suit keeps you cool so it, it wasn't to do with the heat it was bizarre um and I guess I if you were like feeling I'd... awful from the very 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 beginning then you yeah. know some something was, was up yeah it just was bizarre I can remember a group come past me really early on the bike and I thought oh, I'll try and stay with them so I kind of just hung at the back and I was like, oh my God, this is, yeah, it just felt horrendous. But also the group was quite like, when you're at the back of a group, it's quite spiky. Um, so I was like, right, I'm letting them go because I'm, I'm struggling to even keep with the group. Yeah, so to be honest, on the bike, I, I on the back, I didn't even know if I'd finished the bike. Because um, when I came back on the turn from Michael O, I thought, oh, if I see Bex and Rob, where they stood on the way out, I might just pull over and be like, I can't like I can't even push easy watts um and this course like you it's not a course you can just get around it's just I can't even describe it it's just like no other race at all um were you aware uh, what was were you aware of any of the other race dynamics or because you were really not feeling it were you just trying to concentrate on what you were doing I mean and do do you sort of recognize people when they come past what's all that bit like yeah, because I haven't like I haven't raced. I've probably only raced about four or five of these girls on the start line, so it was a completely different dynamic. And I've never really done a race with like where there are groups of athletes. I've always done races where it's quite lonely. So yeah, when people came like when that group came past with um, Mal and like Liz Lyles and etc. And those are the kind of girls I wanted to be around in the race. So that's why I wanted to try and see if I could hold the group. But then I've heard so many stories of people pushing too hard to the turn. They obviously didn't push too hard, but I thought, oh, maybe they're just going too hard. But it turns out they weren't. And I just wasn't able to keep any watts down or anything. Um, so, yeah, that was a whole different dynamic. And then I thought, because I, like, I would have been happy with a top 20 and ecstatic with a top 15. So when I came off the bike, I thought, oh, I'm, in, I'm still in contention for top 20. And running here is the best I've, like, I felt better running than I have biking here mm -hmm. uh, oh, in, in the past like 10 days you mean yeah in the past 10 days like I haven't felt like I felt hot but I haven't felt like I couldn't manage it and I've been running quicker than I've wanted to run here as well um so I thought oh maybe I'll get off the bike because no matter if I'm on, you do and you think oh my god there's no way I could do the marathon and then you get you do manage to do it and I thought well just try it like you don't know so I just kept going until my body would let me um yeah, which didn't get me to the finish line, which is disappointing, but there are always other Konas to come, so 
have to come back. <laughs> you will definitely, definitely have to go back because that was your first time ever in Hawaii, wasn't it? There will be so much that you can take from the past, you know, 10, 12 days that you have had out there that it can only help for next year, the year after, whatever it might be. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, like, we've loved being out here. It's been an amazing holiday experience. Taken a lot from from being here. So by no means has, been, has it been a wasted trip at all. Like, it's been awesome. Um, but, yeah, just I guess it leaves me a bit more, well, disappointed at the moment, but a bit more hungry for next year. Um, so, yeah, got, we'll have a break and, and start. Because it's a funny one because I'm, like, I'm actually – in the best shape like everyone says that don't they but I generally am in the best shape at the moment so you're like do we go to another race but it's that slippery slope of you know I've done a lot of races this year um traveled your body does need a break maybe it's a sign that actually you know I do I do need a break right now um but also like you kind of want to show where your fitness is yeah um, I was able to show that yesterday um and especially can show that my pre- in Weymouth either so it's one of those do you just leave it that kind of gives you more motivation for winter or do you kind of go and target another race but then yes the the slippery slope of your body does need a break at some point and if I say race in December yeah I'd have to take a a good break after that so I don't know how that would lead in my for next year yeah try and qualify for next year because you kind of want to target some of the earlier Ironmans um, so yeah, taking a break, let's say January or February, could be quite risky and trying to get ready for that. So yeah, it's a hard one to think about. Um, maybe I'll just let Rob decide. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why you've got a coach, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because you could be like, right, this is a sign you need a break. Um, but yeah, these things happen. Like I've, I've, it's kind of like I've had a good year, but every race I haven't really shown. I know, like everyone's everyone has problems in a race or leads up to race but when it's kind of like every race of the year it's get it gets a bit tiresome um so yeah it gives me more motivation for next year to kind of show where my training's been um and, and put together some solid results next year good things will um, happen in 2018 nikki yeah yeah and and that's sport and if if you're not prepared to, to take kind of those tumbles um then don't bother starting. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as. Nikki, what's, yeah. it, what's it like when... Okay, so you pretty much collapsed. Yeah. Then as a... So as a pro, when you DNF, what exactly yeah. happens? Because you're clearly midway down a highway, you know, miles from transition. How, how do you get back to, to where you're meant to be? Or, or do you end up in a medical tent? Talk us through it. Yeah, so basically... It's actually quite shocked that there wasn't medical. I know, like they didn't have to have all this, all this like systems to go there, but there wasn't any medical tents down Alley Drive, and that I I was in a state, and I saw a lot of other people in the worst state. Um, and when you get to the turn in Alley Drive, what is it? That's five miles. You're about f- maybe five miles away from go. Obviously, you're at the turn point five miles down Alley Drive, so you've kind of got the I need to run five miles back to get to anywhere. So I guess that was in my head as well. I was like, I need to keep going and plod or walk or stumble five miles down and hope Bex is on the way. And if not, someone's going to be picking me up. Um, and so when I got to Bex, I was like, I wanted to kind of like let her know like how rubbish I felt. Um, and then when I leant on her, you know, kind of like everything just collapsed. Like I just literally, my body just went. Um, and so I was on the side of the road and I was like, my whole body was shaking my whole body like all my arms and legs and feet were just so swollen like literally my arms must have been like twice the size same with the feet and everything and then the, the car came past and they were amazing and so they're like get in the car and I literally couldn't get in the car <laughs> what do you so just clapped onto the, just clapped onto the seat with my legs hanging out and fell to sleep and all I wanted to do was sleep but my lips were like trembling like when I was really cold it was I've I've never kind of gone that deep I guess before so I've never really experienced that side um it's pretty scary because like I was going into like almost quite deep sleep 
Um, and I was, I pretty much slept for like two hours between the car and so the car had to take us as far down our drive as possible and phone the medical, which then picked us up and took us on a kind of diversion all the way to the finish line where they had a whole medical system there. But I have no idea what happened. Like, what well, if that car wasn't there, I don't know how I would have got down the road because I wasn't able to walk or I couldn't hold myself up. Because um, at first, Beck's like, right, let's walk to the next aid station and hopefully you'll pick yourself up and maybe just try and finish. Um, and I just couldn't, I couldn't hold my body up. So yeah, that car saved me. <laughs> so thank you to them. And it was good because when I, after I slept for about two hours and kind of came back around, we saw them on the course and it was nice to go see them and thank them. And their friends were doing really well on the course. So that was cool. That must be really scary for you, but obviously really scary for people around you as well to see you in that state. I wasn't back. Yeah, awful. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> wow. And then, so then you got to the finish line or to the finish area, and then did you go? Then were you in the medical tent for a bit, or what happened then? Yeah, I was in the medical tent for a couple of hours. Like I just w- wanted to sleep, um, but like I felt okay. Like my ha- my heart rate was yeah. Actually, my heart rate um, was about what 166 for how long? An hour. So my heart rate stayed at about 166 for about an hour. Oh my god. And then, so they had to just keep me in there to let it come down. Um, so when it came down, it, I was kind of like free to go. Um, but yeah, it's because it's, I had to dig so deep on the bike. I almost feel like I've done the whole race. <laughs> like my body feels trash. Like, um, see, so yeah, everyone else must be feeling horrendous today. But there was so many Brit age groupers doing amazingly. And obviously Lucy and Dave getting on the podium and Susie coming sick. But it was a really good day. Um, Did you get six... back to the finish line afterwards, or were you? Back... Yeah, we were like, watching everyone come in, which was nice. Um, after like come around, kind of watch people come through the line and and kind of hang around to see how people got on. What do you think you've learned most from your time out there this time in 2017? Um, I think I definitely knew Kona who was massive and huge and tough and kind of yeah takes no prisoners like if you're suffering you literally collapse and can't go on anymore um and just like it kind of like let's allows you to have a good race or kind of awful uh, dnf really um so i knew it was a huge tough race but it's a whole different level when you're here like so i feel like i definitely know (laughs) i go away from the island knowing exactly the shape and you need to be able to do everything perfectly to have a great day here. And if any tiny thing doesn't go to plan, then you're just going to get spat right out. Um, and I know that you can't go for 80 miles on the bike on zero and expect to even get halfway through a run, let alone finish. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, there'll obviously be people who didn't have their day out there. Um, but yeah, I wish I could have got to the finish line, but I, well, I was in no state too. But yeah, it's a tough place, and and I have to come back stronger next time. I'm not the the problem is at the moment I don't really know where it went wrong, so it's hard to pinpoint how to come back stronger because I was ready to go in every sense. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure at the moment. <laughs> not a question for today, I don't think. Not, yeah. not a question for today. Did you? meet people uh, out there um, in the sort of 10 days before who um, who really inspired you? Yeah, there's loads of lovely people here. I mean, like, like the volunteers here are amazing. Like, So you come into transition the, the day before to ride your bike and there's, like, everyone gets a personal helper <laughs> um, who takes you around transition and makes you feel quite at home with it. Um and like just those people are amazing and I met a guy and he was like yeah my wife's racing so me and my daughter are volunteering and 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 they're kind of like they're not involved in the sport but they got involved in a different way like those people are amazing um and they also have a load of energy as well like they give you like because obviously the day before everyone's another's wreck and I was like 
Jill, like it's all good. We'll show you where to go in transition. <laughs> like transitions, like anyone who does an Ironman or seven point three or even a triathlon, they're quite daunting because it's like where where is everything? Um, you know, and it's so easy, especially like say in the in a pro field when you're coming out, and sometimes there isn't anyone in transition. <laughs> so it's like you really do need to know where you're going. Um, so yeah, like I think everyone who gets involved in in Kona is is awesome. Um, and there was uh, God knows how many volunteers at this race. I've never seen so many volunteers in my life. Um, even, on, even on the aid stations, it's amazing. They run along with the pros. So then you can grab your bottle, don't they? Yeah, they run along and make sure, like, if you miss a cup, they'll catch you back up to give you the cup. Um, I mean, they didn't have to run past me yesterday, but uh, that happened a few times. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, yeah, the volunteers are awesome. And, and they give out so much positivity on the run and and, or, and and even on the bike like it's quite hard because there are sections where the aid stations are on quite fast parts um and they do an awesome job of kind of like they kind of run with you to get the momentum to give you the bottle um because all you're focused on is this bottle that you need to collect at every aid station and like it's quite an intense moment of oh yes i've got it or no i haven't but i need to get one um, so yeah, they're they're really good and 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 they kind of create the atmosphere there. And the atmosphere at Kona is ridiculously incredible. Um, like the run course was absolutely buzzing. In fact, say it's on par with Wales. It's like getting on par with Wales on the support on the bike. Uh, not sorry, not the bike, the run. The bit um, around town, because then I guess it goes yeah. into a very 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 lonely place. But exactly, which I didn't get to. So my views could be different on that because Wales is <laughs> packed everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that bit I did want to ask actually about the comparing it because you've done Ironman UK, you've done Wales, and you've done South Africa. Yeah. Um, how did how did that atmosphere compare? Um, you know, during those lonely sections of of the bike, which you get inevitably in Wales as well in, in Bolton. Yeah, um, so there's quite a lot of lonely places on the bike actually. Um, luckily Bex and Rob did a great job of kind of going around the outskirts of the whole race and kind of dropped down on the road to Waikoloa and then the top of the turn so we got we got to see them a couple of times but other than that you're talking maybe support a handful of times otherwise maybe not even that like it was a very lonely bike course um, and this, especially a lonely bike course because it's so like you go out and you come back like you on the highway there's really not much to see um the run course was what i saw of it was brilliant and it was epic but obviously that going up Polani and then out to the energy lab and back and in the energy lab i can imagine was a very lonely place um especially because the town was so buzzing i know you got to the top of Polani, there's music blaring but i can imagine after that it was it was pretty lonely um i haven't we haven't actually seen if everyone i think I think everyone, I think we saw the last person come off the bike. Everyone was like, I think it was close call because um, they were properly sprinting down Polani to get into transition. And everyone was like, I can, we were like, um, yeah. So yeah, the support was brilliant. But Wales, you get sections all, I'd say a lot of the bike um, and the whole run. But I know there's quite limited access out on the Queen K and especially in the Energy Lab, like, it's quite restrictive where you can go. Yeah. Wow, it's yeah. amazing, Nikki. We have loved your Kona diaries. We've loved all the updates. Um, thank you so much for chatting this morning, which can't have been the easiest thing to have to get up and do, and you know, talk through a really disappointing race. But we appreciate your honesty and your openness, and have a great time going dolphin watching. Take some time to talk you know talk through things think through things and yeah you've inspired so many people along the way so don't be too hard on yourself either no definitely this is sport i mean you're not gonna have highs all the time so so you've got to experience the lows don't you so yeah it's good to talk about them as well because they're the times which are the kind of like the harder times to talk about so if you kind of shut away from it it's, it's not a good place to be and when um, do you fly back so we've got a couple of days here. We fly back Monday night um, with a nine-hour stop in LA, so we get to see a bit of LA for a bit, which is nice. And then back up to Scotland to just kind of 
to paradise. And <laughs> yeah, to go to, go into winter. Um, it's like two extremes. <laughs> uh, too hot here, too, too, and then back to the cold winter. So, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see where the plans take us. Maybe just go with the flow for a bit. Like when I was in transition, getting bikes out, I heard two stories. One girl said she had attempted four times and failed, and one girl's um, and a guy was five times. And they just got to the finish line, which was really, really nice to hear. Rob, I think that is a sign of a superb athlete when they can come on and do an interview, you know, the morning after the disappointing day before, yeah, so to speak, very I think. Jolly, didn't she? Well, I think that's that, a, good, a good sort of perspective on it, a, I think. A good head on it. And. Yeah. You know, people. It, it would be so easy to say, no, nah, I don't want to talk about it or yeah, um, yeah. no, not today. You know, well, we can talk next week when, you know, most people would probably appreciate it would almost be. Oh, it just feels for so what we wanted to kind of too late. I know, I know, I uh, really got it for it. It just sounded, and for Bex as well, it just sounded really yeah. horrible, horrible yeah. Um, situation um, to have to see someone like that as well you know to see the person that you love like oh just really not in a good place do you know what doesn't it tell you something about her mental toughness though that she was going <laughs> i was i was trying to keep going in a straight line and and the white line was blurred at the side of the road and i kept wandering out and i was going how can you not think you need to stop at that point you know what the drive that people have to keep going at times like that's incredible yeah yeah, I mean, you think to the Iron Man crawl, don't you? You just think, wow, what? Mm. How are they getting to that to that finish line? And um, yeah, it was you know disappointing day for Nikki, but she was very honest about it. There wasn't she, just saying, well, you know what? That's part of sport, isn't it? And I can learn from it. And I'm going to come back, and I am gonna. It's going to give me fire for next year and to qualify and all that. And an interesting insight as well, Rob, into the life of a professional um triathlete you know nikki's not she she is um she's not you know the the top sort of three in cone there is she she mm. isn't going to be raking it in is what i'm trying to say and so then having that dilemma of okay when do we start that qualifying process again knowing that it's costly it, it will be costly you know towards the end of this year to travel because there won't be any in the northern hemisphere you're gonna to have to travel to a race um and then does that then bury you a bit further is it better to take a rest at this point you know mm. really really interesting i thought yeah and and it goes back to what she said in her first diary where she was talking about having done some you know like how how much of a heavy sweater she was and all of that stuff that's the piece of the puzzle that she needs to get fixed because it, it, I think if you go out to Kona and you already know you're a heavy sweater and then you suffer with all these cramps and that, what sounds like hideous dehydration problems, you know, we said before the show, neither of us are doctors, but it certainly sounds like it's electrolyte related, doesn't it? That the issues that she's had there with the swollen arms and stuff. So uh, that's always going to be the challenge racing out in a really hot, humid climate like that much more so than the fitness to qualify. And I think a lot of people find that in Kona, both pros and age groupers alike. It's it's trying to get the piece of the puzzle firstly to qualify, but then can you actually get out there and how will you do in, in the hottest conditions racing on the equator, essentially? Yeah, yeah. It's, Good luck, Oh, Rob, yeah, best of luck. And and Rob, I reckon uh, she's up for doing a few more regular um regular Nikki's diaries so I think that's going to be a bit of a bit of a regular feature going forward so we will continue to follow um, Nikki but in the meantime seriously look after yourself and uh, thank you very much for your yeah. uh, for coming on over the past couple of weeks because it was great to get a, an insight into um, Kona. Rob we must mention that Ali Rowett who we had on the show a couple of weeks ago managed to nail that 35 to 39 age group category and on her fifth attempt um, become age group world champion. Uh, so that was really, really superb. And I really enjoyed 
catching up with Ali a couple of weeks ago. It was great to hear her story. And she was talking about the swim, wasn't she? And I, I thought afterwards, oh, my God, I will literally never forgive myself if she has a problem in that swim because we were talking about it quite a bit. So, yeah, she said, thankfully, she uh, didn't drown. So uh, well done, Ali, for not drowning. And, um, yeah, I think it was still she was two minutes down, I think, with two miles to go. Um, so we, Put it all in yeah. the line to finish, hey? Yeah, so fantastic to to clinch that. Uh, Ruth Purbrook, fellow team um, Free Speed member, was third in the 25 to 29 category. And Charlie Pennington as well, who you spoke to a couple of weeks ago, he was going for the win, wasn't he? Unfortunately, yeah. didn't happen. Um, but he came away with fifth in that age group. So, you know, another solid, solid result. And Jane Hansen as well. She would have been going for for the win and uh, unfortunately didn't get it this year. But I think that's her third Kona and she's either won or come second um, in all those three appearances. So, again, another very, very consistent um, performer. Unfortunately, Brian Fogarty, who um, was first overall amateur at Ironman UK, we've had him on the show a couple of times. He sadly was a DNF. He was indeed. And uh, yeah, look forward to hearing from these guys and getting them back on the show sometime in the future. It's it's interesting, isn't it, when you go through the names and you go, we must interview all these guys and girls. That's great. We've we've got a real bank of people who are doing really successful at the World Championships. So if you've not heard those shows, get back through the archives and check them out because some really interesting stories there. Right, I think we should jump on over as well as Kona happening this weekend. We also had Ironman Louisville over in America, in Kentucky. We had wins there for Andy Starkowitz and Lisa Roberts. Yes, we did, Robert. Yeah, yeah, no, and it seems seems strange, doesn't it, to have uh, an Ironman like literally the day after Kona. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) But (laughs) it's so strange. Clearly, they were not racing in Hawaii. Um, But no, it, it shows just how Ironman is year round pretty much They're running out of weekends aren't they sorry Rob I had to turn my mic off there I had a bit of a coughing fit I wondered where you'd gone there you go yeah you sorry go. I literally that I literally, was smooth nobody even noticed <laughs> yeah um, I literally turned it off and uh, had a bit of a cough um, had a really embarrassing situation on the tram today just started coughing thankfully I had a tiny bit of water Okay. left in my bottle but you know when your eyes start watering I was like oh god how embarrassing oh, bless anyway you. yeah anyway okay. uh, Rob some yeah yeah it's all fine um some sad news from Kona um and you might have heard about it but uh US triathlete Matt Russell was hit by a, a car mm. during the world championship race which is just awful and um awful for him because he's just become a a new dad again and it's it's just dreadful and and Jesse Thomas was right behind him on on the bike when it happened and and he witnessed it but the one thing that we can all do to to help is that um they've started a campaign a fundraising campaign to help pay for some of the medical um bills um and another expenses at the moment for his partner and and the family so if you want to go and check that out, then go to www.ucaring.com forward slash Gillian Russell. I'm sure if you were to type in Matt Russell, I am Ancona in Google or something, it would come up. But yeah, ucaring.com forward slash Gillian Russell. Yeah, we'll put a link to that in the show notes. And there's also stories on various websites, slow twitch and places like that about it. It sounds like a car just pulled out across in front of them. On the, I think it was on the descent from Harvey um, or Waikoloa. And uh, this, it's interesting that the slow twitch articles are really good. And then in the comment section, there are people commenting who actually witnessed it happen. So, uh, yeah, your worst nightmare, isn't it? A car pulling out of you, let alone when you're doing 30 odd miles an hour in a race. So, we, we send oh. our best wishes to Matt and the family. And if you can spare a few quid, get over there and, uh, and donate to the family. And, uh, Definitely takes us pretty much to the end of the show that sad note doesn't it really i think it does yep it does um so thank you very much to nikki for all of her contributions over the past couple of weeks um we've had a, a lot of positive feedback from that so it was great to get that insight and 
Uh, yeah, if, if you're training and racing, well, go out there and have fun and, and be inspired by those amazing athletes out in Kona. Absolutely. And just a final shout out to our sponsor, Tribe. If you want to go over and get yourself some goodies from Tribe this week, you can use the code OXYGEN1 to pick yourself up six of uh, a sample pack of your choice of their energy bars or recovery shakes and all that good stuff. So the code OXYGEN1 at checkout. All right, everyone. Thanks very much for listening. You've been listening to the Oxygen Addict Triathlon Podcast. I'm Coach Rob Wilby. I'm Helen Murray. And until next week, have a great safe training and racing week, and we'll speak to you again soon. See ya.